All right. Welcome back to the Bellied Up podcast presented by Fleet Farm. Fleet Farm. We love it. Miles, your voice sounds <clears throat> awful today. I'm going to tell uh, you that right now. You know, I didn't do my vocal warm ups. So. Oh, yeah. Was, <clears throat> is that really the cause of it? Or perhaps uh, were you out inebriating last night? I I was out last night, but. I just had a couple beers and then I called called it a night. So I don't know. Oh. What, maybe I'm coming down with something. Yeah. Okay. I love I love the way you lie. <laughs> um. But Charlie, where are we at? Miles, we are at the uh, Green Bay Curling Club, uh, which is a fantastic spot in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Just uh, you know, just a stone's toss away uh, from Lambeau I see Field. What you did there. Just a stone cast away from Lambeau Field. Yeah, uh, it's a beautiful spot right here in Green Bay, Wisconsin. And if you like curling, holy smokes, you know, get on out here. You can be a member. Yeah. And we're currently bellied up to the rock bar, I think, is you see the sign. back. Oh, there? yeah, because the stones are called rocks. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, do fun you know, fact, do you know what they're made of? Yes, I do. Miles. Go and ahead then, Charlie. It's granite. It is. And do you know which uh, state has granite as their state rock? Um, Wisconsin. I think so. Although I haven't state checked that. rock. I, yeah. is, is state rock a thing? You don't know Fargo state rock? Wait, I think. Well, let me check Google this. It. Wisconsin state rock. I think it might be red granite, you know, but I don't know. Anyway, it's that's a tangen, tangential that is thing confirmed? here. Red we, granite. We got it confirmed. Bang a rang. Okay. Why do you know that? Because uh, I love Wisconsin, Miles. You really do. I've never met anyone that loves Wisconsin as much as you. Well, you know, I've never met anyone quite like you either. <laughs> you know, that's I'll take that as a compliment. Okay. I'm not going to push back on that one. That sounds good. Have you ever curled? I have never curled. Okay. You have, correct? Yes, I have. I did it one time for a video, so it's not like I did it, like played a whole game or whatever. Yep. But I played it enough to know that I'm not the best. What's the hardest part about curling in your mind? In my mind, well, it's just uh, spatial orientation and getting the stone and the bullseye, you know? Uh, the brooming, the sweeping, I really enjoyed. I enjoyed yeah, so that like throwing it is the hardest part. I think so, but you just got to be in the zone. You got to be in the Zen zone. What does Charlie Barons do to get in the zone? Well, <laughs> Charlie Barons does a lot of things. I mean, you know, I sit there in, in silence and I, I visualize Miles. Okay. I visualize the stone getting to, in, into the bullseye. You know, and that that's really a life lesson. You know, Vi visualize the future you want. You know, spend a little time every morning waking up. You know, and just sitting there visualizing. And that's what you do before you curl? I, I pretty much, yeah. Some might call so this yeah, you're sleeping. Intense. Oh. You know, but closing your eyes and closing my eyes and letting my dreams take me where wherever I gotta go. So yeah, I don't know. I, but I'm I'm excited. I think we're gonna give it a go today a little bit, you know. Yeah, we're gonna try it, I think. Yeah. So we'll see how that goes. I I <clears throat> I'm mostly concerned about getting in that position that they get in when they throw it. Oh, there's going to be a lot. There's going to be a lot. <sighs> and then trying to get up off of the off of the ice after throwing it is like thing I think I'm most worried about. Well, I think a little stretching will go a long way. You guys, can you stretch me out? Yeah, I'll stretch you out. All right. Yeah. Well, after this, we'll uh, I'll have you stretch me out, maybe activate the glutes a little bit, and then we'll yeah. get after it. That'd be good. Actually, if you lie on your back, I can. <laughs> I, I may actually, I can stretch you and then I can even push you like a stone and see how far you yeah. go. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Put you on a Human little saucer. Stone throw. That could be fun. Put you on a little saucer, you know? <laughs> see how close to the bullseye you can get? Should we do that? Uh, that would be kind of fun, actually. That would be fun. I bet they've done that. Uh, well, I, we'll have to ask. I don't know. I'm afraid it might ruin the ice because if one thing I know about curling is that the ice matters. The ice does matter. Yeah, you got it. You're right. You're right. We don't want to uh, mess with the structural integrity of their ice out there. Not that you would do that. And if people are watching the video, they can see the monitors behind us. I mean, this is a fancy establishment that it's we got. It's a very fancy establishment. In fact, as we're shooting this, you can see if anyone hits a bullseye, you know, which. Oh, oh there goes someone there sliding goes someone. right through. God, this is great. <clears throat> This is going to be bad for our uh, attention issues, Miles. Yeah, I shouldn't have pointed that out. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just going to be watching these monitors, see who's getting a, a bullseye. Is that what it's called, by the way, a bullseye when it goes in the middle? I don't know. I've never done it. Well, we'll have to figure it out. But I'm excited for another uh, day of taking callers and 
you know, doing all that. I, I, I wonder what. Yeah, to- well, I'm also excited, too. Uh, we found out today that there's a thing in the curling community called broom stacking. Oh, yeah. Broom stacking. That's a fun thing. Why can so, you explain? To- so what you do is after your match, you and the other team got to sit down at a table and have some beers and get to know each other. I feel like you'd be a really good broom stacker. I would be. I would be not so much the guy throwing necessarily, but definitely the camaraderie guy after yeah, the broom stacking. Yeah. Miles is there for uh, to, to bring the... Uh, Bring the fellas and the gals together. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, good. I can't. Uh, why don't we start broom stacking you and me right now and take some callers? All right, we're going to take some callers. Cheers. Oh, I just spilled on me. That's why I get for not cheers and before I sip. Miles. What's going on? Who do we got on the line? Colton. Colton with a C? Yes, sir. How are you? Oh, another day in paradise, brother. How you guys doing? Doing good, Colton. What's uh, what's cooking? Where are you calling in from? Ohio. Nice. Where in Ohio? Uh, in near Athens. Oh, sure. Sounds good. You guys got you? Do, you don't have any snow down there anymore. No, no. It's all melted. Yeah, we had it was. In the negative last week, and now it's 50 out. It's crazy how that works. Oh, I'm loving it. <laughs> well, what's on your mind? Looking for some advice. All right. Well, we're your guys, I hope. I hope so. I've been calling for like a month trying to get you guys. Well, you're here. So I currently moved in with Tana. Wait a second, Colton. Hang on a second. I just I had to drop my microphone for a second. Thank you, first of all, for your dedication to calling in. And uh, second uh, of all, did you just say you're moving in? I'm moving in. I've currently got an apartment with my old lady. Okay, good okay. for you. <clears throat> Need some advice, boys. <laughs> all right. What's the advice? <laughs> what's the advice? What's the question? So I need. I need some. What's some advice for moving in with your significant other? Oh, boy. Okay, so just general advice about moving in with the significant other. Well, I think we should start, Miles, with how long have you been dating? Uh, I've been dating for about eight months. <sighs> oh, eight months. Okay. That, I, uh, that's pretty quick. You must be uh, pretty head over heels, huh? Well, we were talking. We've been talking. We we talked for about six months before I decided to pop the question. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Hang on. <laughs> what question were we popping? Like, like the question of, do you want to move in, or the question? No, I, was, uh, I wait to see if she wanted to be my lady. Ah, so you were talking for six months, and then uh, you guys were hanging out or whatever, and then how? It, how uh, did you- so, like, you asked her to be your girlfriend. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. The other earlier question is what he's saying. I see. I see. I see. I, yeah. Is there, is that, yeah. and is that still a thing? Is that, cause I feel like when I started dating Ann, we just like, we woke up one day and we're like, yeah, we're just dating. You know what I mean? There was no official asked of the girlfriend thing. Oh, really? Yeah. W- what's your take on that, Charlie? I don't know how any of that works, honestly. Um, well, that, that, <clears throat> <laughs> I don't know. This this is uh funny. Okay, so so you you date him for six months, kind of. You're just seeing each other for six months, and then you ask yeah. her to officially be your girlfriend. Now fast forward eight months after that, who asked who to move into whose house? I guess I asked to move into mine. Okay, so she moved into yours. And how is it yeah. going so far? It's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> not bad. <laughs> Yeah. It's not bad. What were you thinking of during that very long hesitation between not and bad, you know? Just a few little things. All right. Well, like what are like Yeah, what are those things? You got to let me know. She likes it cooking in here and I like the AC on. Mm. Okay. So you've lost your thermo- or, uh, thermostat privileges it sounds like. Yeah, I lost the, the decoration portion of it 
is in you didn't want any decorations and she did or well, vice versa? Well, I what? had one little corner. I have one little corner. That's all I got. Now, be honest. Before she came in and started decorating, did you just have one poster on the wall of like Rocky Four movie poster on the wall, or did you actually decorate your? Well, your... I, my brother got me this Roosters bar sign a while ago, and and I decided to hang it up. And she said that it was getting taken down. Well. Had put foot down. You put your foot down on a bar, bar sign. sign. Up. On the bar sign. Yeah. Is it a neon light? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Is this in your living room? It says "Welcome to Roosters." Welcome to Roosters. Well, honestly, that sounds pretty cool. Is is? Did you have that in the living room though? Yeah, I had to stay in the living room. <laughs> Well, You're literally like Michael Scott with his <laughs> neon sign at the dinner party. He puts it up. So, I mean, well, she wanted. Go ahead. Go ahead. But well, she wanted it to go in the laundry room, but I said no. It's staying out here, and I like it. <laughs> I hate. Okay, here's some advice for you. I hate to break it to you. That ain't staying up forever. <laughs> you are on borrowed yeah, time for how long that thing is in the living room. Yeah, you can choose uh, this gal who you probably love very much, or you can choose the rooster's sign. It's going to be uh, that simple. I mean, we could tell you. We could give you the advice of, no, you keep that rooster sign up. But, you know, we do want you to stay in this relationship. Yeah, well, better advice is, I think um, it's good for you to stand your ground at first. But just know you're going to have to crumble at some point. Yeah. And That's kind of how relationships are. <laughs> and you're going to have a lot of battles. A lot of them. You can win a battle and lose the war. You know, like you can hang yeah. up the rooster oh, yeah. sign and That's something is. else is coming out. Like, like you're going to want to ha- hold some cards. And if you if you drop all your cards on a rooster sign, you better really love that rooster sign. I got to tell you that much. Oh, I love it. It's one of the best gifts I've ever had, I've ever gotten. Okay. okay, well, let's hey, let's hold on. Let's maybe dive into a little bit. Why do you love this sign so much? What does it mean to you? Good question. So, roosters. Growing up as a kid, after Friday Night Lights, that was the place to go. Okay. Wow. So it's, it's it's a summer eat to eat with quality food. I probably go there for twenty five bucks, get shit faced, and leave a tip. Okay, and you said after Friday Night Lights, like you as a player would play in the game on Friday and then go to Roosters. Yeah. Okay, so um, this next bit of advice is going to be uh, tough to swallow. This is going to go in the category of tough pill to swallow, and everyone Ooh. who is an athlete. At some point, has to do this. You need to grab the yearbook and just close it. Oh wow, wow! How did that feel hearing that? Miles tell you to close the yearbook. How'd that feel? Be honest. Uh, you know, it kind of hurt, <laughs> but at the bottom of the rooster sign, there's a Miller Lite, and Uh-oh. her dad loves Miller Lite, so I'm thinking it might be a regift. Okay. Oh, a regift. Like you think you're gonna give that to her dad now? Yeah, and then he hangs up in his house. Oh wow. Okay. I All don't right. mind that. That yeah. way that way it's 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 keeping her happy, but it's keeping me happy because I still get to go and see it. So <laughs> it's like a it's like a dog that you have to give away because it bit the nephew, you yeah. know. All all I care is that if I can just see him once a month, just let me come by. <laughs> this is a rescued beer sign at this point. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's hilarious. Well, it's uh, where is the current status of the beer sign? Where where is it currently at? It's, oh, it's right by the TV in the front room. Uh, yeah. Oh, it's still hanging. Did so, I ask that already? No, we had, well, we said the living room. Oh, in the okay, got it. by the um, TV though. Yeah, yeah that is that. <laughs> lit up by the TV. Just, little backlight. Yeah. Um, do you see what happened just now though? You've already started the process of losing your ground on this thing because you've already got a plan B for it. Mm-hmm. You know, 
If you're really truly sticking yeah. your ground, you wouldn't have a plan B, you know? Uh, yeah, I see what you've had. Yeah. And then we know it's tough to lose your favorite beer sign. We know it's tough. But but here's the thing. So you're in an apartment? Yeah. So hopefully someday you can end up getting a home. You know, uh, God willing, it's with, you know, your your girlfriend you got now. You guys set up in a house. So you, you someday get married, all that stuff. You're going to need a pretty cool rooster's bar sign to hang in your garage. That's where I think the, right. the long-term play is with this thing. And uh, you can have a nice little uh, garage bar next to the garage fridge. You got the sign in the wall. Ask your buddies. Ask your father-in-law. It sounds like he likes having some beers. And then all of a sudden, you get to look at thing, that thing every single day. And she's happy. Yeah, I kind of agree with him, Colton. Like you got to find your uh, your little oasis here, you know, whether it's your basement or your garage. And uh, you just start focusing on making that the best basement or garage you can, because I know a lot of fellas within relationships long term and not one of them, not one of them own the living room. That, yeah, I mean, it, that is, you know, kudos, honestly, kudos to your your gal for not like already making you take that down yeah i can't believe it's still sitting there and i'm not saying it shouldn't be up there but i'm just it's, surprised it's, it's worthy of the living room but i just don't know how long you'll be able to stand your ground yeah do you have any other issues going on with the gal <laughs> no just just looking for some moral advice you know first time living with a woman yeah yeah yeah, yeah well, i think you did we did give you some good advice here is you're you're gonna lose all the battles at some point or you're going to lose the war, but you might win some battles here and there. Yeah, your, your goal here, though, and you like her quite a bit, even after this rooster situation. You like her? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I could see a future. Yo, you could see a future. Wow. Well, <laughs> holy I mean, smokes. You, you, she moved in, so you're kind of stuck for at least a little while. Yeah. Does she want to get married right now? No, I don't think so. Uh, her uncle Will's and kind of hit drop on the head, and I'm saying I do got a future because when I first started coming around, her dad wouldn't talk to me, but I've been getting a couple. Hey, Colton, how you doing? Oh, so we're getting somewhere. And if you, you bring that sign uh, over to her I see dad, the alternative motive uh -huh. with that thing. Yeah, and you know what you're doing? Oh, he. You know what he's doing? I know what you're doing, Colton. You already know that sign's going. You know that sign's going. You wanted to call up on this podcast to tell us about this sign, how much you love this sign, knowing you're already going to give it away to your father-in-law, knowing that's a plan. But if you, if your girlfriend listens to this podcast, she is going to know that you love it and you gave it up because you love her more. Wow. Super smart. So we're going to need you to what? say that right now. Okay. So she knows and she listens to this and you can even clip that and show her and be like, wow, see, honey. I really love you, and that's why I let the sign go. Even if, and and you can be, have your fingers crossed, or you're like give me a wink afterwards if you want. We just need to get it on tape so that you know you got receipts. Yeah, yeah, and just take this clip so she doesn't know that you knew all along yeah. you were getting rid just of this listen, thing. Just listen, just have her listen to starting right now. Yeah. Trying to say that I love my girlfriend more than I love my rooster sign. Done. Oh, yeah. God. Send that over. To, and she's not going to listen to this full podcast for no, sure. God, no. Yeah. So. Oh, uh, she hates the podcast. We got in Cleveland. <laughs> this is all we listen to. Oh, yeah. She hates it. Oh, she hates the podcast. Why? <laughs> Why does she? Hate she just can't. She can't get her head wrapped around the whole podcast thing. Like, babe, you learn something new every time you listen to one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so she hates all podcasts or just our podcast? This podcast in general. <laughs> okay. All right. So what does she do? She. What do you mean? So she doesn't like talk radio either. No. That's enough. She listens to her music. You know what? I take all this back. Hang the sign. Keep the sign up. Keep Stand sign. your ground. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Colton, I think we've I think we've started a beautiful thing between you and your uh, your gal here. Congratulations. I appreciate it, Charlie. All right. Well, listen. Let us know how it goes. And I I apologize for telling you to close the yearbook. That was. 
maybe a tough pill to swallow, but you know my my guys tell me that every other day. Yeah, so. Miles has his it. Miles has not only his yearbook open but bookmarks in it. Yeah, just I, tra- in case I, tra- someone I else travel tries with to it. Quote. Yeah, I travel. <laughs> All right, my guy. Well, listen, thank you for calling in and uh, call back in and keep us updated on what happened with this rooster sign. Oh, I will. I'll, I'll send a snapshot to the to, on the old Instagram. There Please do it. I like that. Send a Snapchat, Snapchat on our on Instagram. Instagram. <laughs> Sounds good. All right, man. Well, thanks for calling in. I appreciate it, boys. Watch out for deer and tell your folks I say hi. All right. Right back at you, guy. Take Real care good. now. Real good. So, Miles, that was really fun. Um, is there anything that you had to give up in your house uh, that you really like? And you like Ann more, obviously. But yeah, you like thing. well, you know, when we moved into our house. It's kind of a blank slate. So you never have to, like, give much up. Oh, that's in nice. that sense. Yeah. Um, it just never goes up. Yeah. You know, right. Or it just <laughs> goes in the basement or this and that. Um not much that is was there something that you had in mind ever in past relationships that you're like i stick stuck my ground and then i didn't uh i mean as far as like home decor uh no i mean not like a packer bathroom or anything nothing dude honestly like even i mean i uh i am i just moved into my spot or i think i've said this on the podcast like when i was married uh there was we moved into a place and yeah i never really i never did anything proactive to like hang anything other than what i was told to hang yeah so that's kind of it and now in my current house i just hung my first picture on new year's eve and i've been there for six months i'm proud of you no thank you hey it doesn't matter how long it's been i'm proud of you thank you dude new year new me yeah yeah Boom. boom january one jan one baby um I mean, he kind of is living out every guy's dream to be able to hang a neon sign in their living room. I know. I, just, I know. I mean, that's the fact that, that it isn't down already. I mean, it's like it literally is the Michael Scott situation with Jan and mm-hmm. he's got the what's what's the sign? Is it St. Paul girl? Yeah. Uh. <laughs> just bright blue neon. <laughs> Do you think that was product placement in the office? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Probably. Yeah, probably. That's a great product placement, Theo. Speaking of which, tippy cow, ladies and gentlemen. (laughs) (laughs) All right, let's take another one. Welcome to the Bellied Up Podcast. Who we got on the phone right now? My name's Ben. Ben, how you doing? Where you calling from? The greatest city on the mighty Mississippi. Oh, Lacrosse? <laughs> no, St. Louis. Oh, St. Louis. STL. All right. There we go. <clears throat> How is the Gateway City doing? Oh, beautiful. Yeah. I haven't been on the Gateway Arch myself. Can't do the height. Oh, you haven't? I went in that thing. I went in the arch before. Miles, have you ever been in the arch? No. I'm, oh. s- I'm scared of falling as well. <clears throat> no, it's wild. You get into this little, since neither of you have gone up, I'd tell you about it real quick. You get in these little elevator, this rickety kind of elevator, and it creaks all the way up, and it's very claustrophobic. And then you get up there, and you're like, huh, how's about it? And then you get back in and go back down. <laughs> it's actually kind of fun. I recommend it. Is it true that the the it sways up there? Yeah, it gives you a little sway. It's got to. It's got to sway. Yeah. You know, otherwise. I, that's I, And then for that reason, I'm out. I don't need to go up there. You guys haven't lived. You both got to do it. Put it on your bucket list. So what's cooking over there in St. Louis? Uh, not so much. Just waiting before I have to go into work. And, you know, I saw you guys had your phone call on. I'm like, ooh, maybe I can get in since you guys just posted it. Yeah. Well, I, awesome. I'm with- episodes later i finally got in heck yeah wait i already forgot what is your name sorry ben m ben ben jeez louise jeez louise i was i thought you were just going by one initial i was like we got uh (laughs) james bond stuff going on here m you know all right ben sorry about that can we can we uh offer you some advice on anything yeah are you got some to buy sell or trade what's cooking today I want some advice. How do you tell your old farm-raised parent 
that there's stuff that they can't fix. <laughs> well, first of all, I think the answer is, yeah, you don't. Okay. Uh, <laughs> what, first of all, what are they trying to fix right now? Oh, some rickety old plumbing. Oh, they're they're redoing their plumbing, huh? Sounds like a shitty situation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? So what's busted? Which pipe? Are we talking sink or can? Oh, it's our uh, upstairs uh, uh, plumbing for our bathroom. Uh, the, we can't get the sink uh, pipes to go and get fixed. Every time my dad fiddles with it, it gets more and more busted. <laughs> did, so, did you tell him he, that? He's saying he can do it. <laughs> I love this. Why would he pay someone else when he can just do it himself, you know? But he keeps breaking more of it. I'm like, just call someone. <laughs> you know what? You're that making it more worse. Ben, that's not your role. That is not your, your role is to hold the Stand flashlight there, hold for the your flashlight dad and hand him stuff. <laughs> Are you helping him when he's doing this or is he doing this on his own? I try to help. What it do you do? That old man mood where it's like, uh, walk <laughs> away. I got this. <laughs> hey, have you tried showing him a YouTube video on how to do it? Oh, he, he works as a, as like, uh, for my old school district, he worked as he works as a uh, like maintenance guy for like plumbing and stuff. So yep. he thinks he knows how to fix it. I'm like, well, there's a difference between like a like half inch pipe for like a freezer fluid, and then there's a difference between like plumbing in your house. Yeah. Well, is there? <clears throat> I think it's kind of all the same. To I me. think there is because like all my dad does is like fix coolant and stuff, and that's it. I mean, he doesn't do like major plumbing that requires you to like rip apart the house. What is, he, but, what is he ripped up in the bathroom, by the way? What What is the current state oh, of this bathroom? So, okay, so he managed to fix our shower drain. So he managed to fix that. So he's got a big ass hole in the ceiling in our kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> where uh, he just, he, he like, there's a live wire that runs right near it. There's like a completely corroded out uh, copper pipe coming in and every time my dad tries to put stuff on and it keeps falling apart and breaking and bending you have to go and cut more pipe oh geez okay i mean so hold on the guy clearly i mean you can't argue it. if he did fix one thing with the plumbing it's tough after yeah, that he only fixed the shower he can't get the sink to work for some reason right. yes yeah yeah he's getting to it and it's smart to yeah, just leave the later. hole open downstairs so then when he's inevitably going to have to fix his fix, he doesn't need to cut open another hole. It's counterproductive. So I, I'm on board with just leaving the hole in the ceiling in the kitchen. Yeah, maybe it's just going to be on a feature of our house. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. feature. You got to lean in. Hey, we got it. this beautiful open concept ceiling. <laughs> yeah, vaulted ceiling. Is what we could call it. Now, here, if you really do want to fix this situation, it's going to require two things. Uh, one money and two time. And here's the first thing I'm asking. Are your folks, uh, they still work in the farm farm still functional? No, my dad's, we live in the city. My dad was a farm raised boy. Oh. So he has the, I can do it all attitude. Got it. Well, then this is a simple fix and it's going to require a lot of money on your end. First of all, Ben, you've got to be the hero <laughs> son and you got to send your folks off on an all expenses paid vacation yeah. okay and yeah. then when they're gone you call an actual plumber to get in there and take care of that that whole plumbing situation I ain't got the money for that well you start start buying those lotto tickets i don't know what yeah. to tell you better tab you... investing is a good option that's what my parents been telling me go and buy a lotto ticket when the money you just don't give us the money yeah. <laughs> oh wait your parents are saying don't buy the lotto tickets no, do buy the lottery. Oh yeah. Tickets. They also try to. They also try to say we should do it again, and if we win, to sign in your name, so if we die, you get the money. Oh yeah, I see. So they're already pretty planning for the lotto. You, I, yeah, I love the elaborate lotto planning, just in case. Yeah, you got to have that stuff yeah, ironed easy. out before you win the lotto. That you buy, you don't yeah, buy. Let's, a, have a, let's have a new boy kid. If we win the lottery, just sign in the kid's name. <laughs> so if you ever reach an unfortunate accident they can just go and spend all the money 
<laughs> I love this. Yeah, you know, you don't. That, that's actually some really. It, 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 I love the dreaming that goes along with it and all the planning. It, it's like you don't play uh, the. Lo- yeah, it's a dream. That's the key word, a dream. Yeah. Well, you don't play the lotto to win. You play the lotto for the dreams, and that's it. That's what keeps you going. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. Anyways, I think that I think you're just kind of screwed. Now, is your mom on board with not hiring somebody to do this? Oh, we we want to hire someone. It's just he keeps saying no that he can fix. It. But the thing is, is I have a father much like this. Yeah. I, he's a construction guy, and he he actually does fix stuff, but it takes him a long time. And his body's broken oh. down. His body's broken down. So then he's always complaining about his back and his knees and all that other stuff. And even though he can fix it, we're like, why don't you, instead of spending the entire day at the lake in the back fixing this stuff, why don't we just pay someone so you can actually come to the lake and enjoy it instead of doing all the work? That's what he's saying. We we don't have to pay that much. It's only like three, I think it was like three grand is the plumbing fix instead of like my dad filling around with it with all the wrong stuff for like months. Oh no, it's been since last Christmas. Like okay. exactly the last year, twenty fifth. My dad busted the pipe. It's been a little over one year exact, and he still hasn't fixed the kitchen. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I guess you're short of sending him out. Does your dad have any hobbies outside of fixing uh, or not fixing the, the <laughs> hunting and fishing? Bathroom. There's not much I can do. Hunting and fishing. That's it. He's a hunter and he's a fisher. Yeah. I, I think I got a. I think I got the, the, the fix for you. Okay. I think I figured it out. I just did some math in my head. He sounds like a guy that. If his friend suggests something, he'll be open to doing it. But if his family members suggest something, he won't do it. So mm. you need to get. Oh, to that's hundred percent true. So what you need to do is you need to get with one of their friends. You might have to. You might have to wet the beak for him a little bit, depending on how these, how close these friends are. Um, but you're gonna need them to suggest to your dad that he should just hire someone to do it. And I guarantee the first time they say it, he's not going to do it. But if they're like, you still haven't hired someone? Come on. It's so easy. Just go hire him. You can do it. He'll do it the next day. Oh, no. His friends are all also country born and bred. I know. That's why I'm saying you gotta, you're got to. you going to have to pay him a little yeah, bit. Yeah, you're going to have to grease those wheels. You're going to have to bribe him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Now, as we all know about, you know. I mean, they got their principles. They do, but they can be bought. Absolutely. Because yeah. I don't know anything about, about old guys who like working hard is they do also like earning money. Yeah. So. The root of all of this is money. They don't want to have someone else. It's less about the pride of someone else coming and fix it, more about the financial element of it. So you bribe one of their buddies, you know. I would say a hundred bucks can get this problem solved. Uh, a crisp, cool Benjamin Franklin will get the job done. Yeah, and that might just have to be your Christmas present to your uh, your dad. You know, maybe. And he's gonna hate the gift. And so, can you tell me? Can you tell me this? How has this affected your life? Is it like? <clears throat> Cause I, like, are you not, not use the upstairs bathroom thing? So you have to share the bathroom with your parents. Out of the shower. So you have to share your bathroom. Yeah, we, have with an, you? we only have an upstairs bathroom, so we all have to wash our hands out of the bathtub. <laughs> <laughs> Get a bar of soap and just scrub our hands underneath the bathroom tap. <laughs> the, the tap. This is amazing. This is amazing. You guys are washing your hands in the bathtub. It's it's like you're living in a dorm room with your parents now. It's like you coming in and out with your like with your little like bag with all the stuff that you have and you high five them like you're up. I warmed it up for you. <laughs> well, I got when, when the last time you uh, were working with your dad, when the last time before he kicked you out, before he kicked you out, you were helping him do this, right? Uh, yeah, somewhat helping. Okay. We, we were just trying to figure out where the leak was happening, and that was the last time. 
Okay. All right. But growing up, you've done a lot of projects with your dad of this nature. It sounded like. No, no. <laughs> He's, he sounds like the no. dad's a lone wolf out there. Dad's just a lone wolf. Okay. Yeah, he is. He's got like, I'm going gonna, gonna to do it. You're in my way. Get out my way. Well, maybe it's possible. Maybe it's possible. We're going to give you one other angle here. It is possible that you do not know the top three rules of helping your dad fix something. Miles? What are they? Well, I think number one is always aim the flashlight where your dad says and don't get distracted. And that might be the hardest one to follow. But also know that where he says to point it is not where he actually wants you to point it. But you He's going to get mad at you for doing exactly what he told you to do. Exactly. And you just have to sit uh-huh. there and absorb that like a sponge. And that may bring up uh, emotions of anger. It may bring up emotions of sadness. And that's step two. Take all those emotions and shove them deep, deep down inside you <laughs> or take them out to the garden and bury them with the rhubarb. The okay? only time you can talk about emotions with your dad is... When you're kind of bitching about something that your mom did that they bo- you both didn't like. So you can have a bonding oh, yeah, moment that's there. 100% true. Yeah. Yep. And that is actually the next step is find those bonding moments uh, with your dad in the deal because you need to buy his good graces early on in this uh, this fixing relationship because you're definitely going to screw something up and you're going to need his forgiveness, which is not unconditional forgiveness. So you got to give him a reason to forgive you early on here. That sound about right? Yeah. All right. You guys gave me some advice there. Yeah, oh. that, yeah I, I don't think he's going to take that I don't way think he's saying he, the, it. Yeah. The, the tone of his voice no. says yeah. otherwise. <laughs> we've, we've disappointed uh, Ben the way he's disappointed his father in this situation. <laughs> well, Ben, we're really feeling into here. Sorry we couldn't give you better advice. Well, hold on, on one last thing here. Yeah. Hey, Ben, if you're so upset about the sink, why don't you just fix the sink? Because I also know. I don't have the know how I. I, Well, I barely did any plumbing in high school when I took the home, uh, the home ex class. But the thing is, is your your dad doesn't know either. And he's still doing it. Yeah. You can get in there. You can watch a YouTube video as much as anyone else can, Ben. Yeah, you you have what your dad doesn't, and that's YouTube. Mm-hmm. Oh, like that one episode that you guys had where you were talking about that 17-minute YouTube episode and how to fix that one thing? Okay, do not. Uh, the bar, is that what he's oh, talking shit. about? <laughs> you know, uh, Ben. Don't watch our videos. Yeah, seriously, that was not an instructional. There are well-trained professionals on yes. YouTube teaching you how to do everything <laughs> you could ever imagine that's your fault for looking at our youtube videos but also what i found with those old guys that like fixing stuff is even if they're doing like the, i'm getting to it you start fixing it that he's never gonna pop up faster out of this couch to come help or to take it over when he sees someone doing something that he should be doing and that makes him so mad and it could be a good motivator for him would you agree Oh, yeah, he'll blame me if something messes up, then he'll have to fix it, then he'll actually get it done. Well, the thing is, is maybe you just got to jump on that grenade. Go make it worse to motivate him. Make it so bad that he has to fire someone. <laughs> <laughs> That's the move. Just a bare minimum expectations, like but just a bare disappointment. Yeah, <laughs> just, just go and, like, just start ripping off the sheetrock. Start uh, just just take the entire pipe off and turn on the faucet and just let flood the house. All right, there you go. <laughs> I think that's it. I think after trying several different uh, pieces uh, of advice, yeah. that that's the one we should go. Just with. make it worse before he calls someone to make it better. Yeah. Well, so per- Charlie, I heard you said you've been to St. Louis. Yeah, I've been to St. Louis. Yeah, I was down there doing a comedy show, and I went there uh, when I was a kid. Yeah, well, 18-ish somewhere. Yeah, I've been there twice. Beautiful city. I love it. Yeah. I heard you're a big cheese connoisseur. Y'all... What's your opinion of our St. Louis specialty cheese? Whoa, okay. Well, connoisseur is a stretch. Yeah. This guy only knows about a pepper jack cheese and cheddar cheese, and that's it. Asiago. No Provel? What's that? 
Provel. Oh, yeah, Provel, sure. He doesn't know what that is. That's not true. Listen, here's my deal with cheese. I like cheese, and I think it tastes fantastic, okay? But can I remember all the names? No, I've got so much other stuff I've got to remember, oh, you know? Yeah. I like what? What, like, you got, what else you got Like remember? advice on how to hold the flashlight for your dad when uh-huh. he's fixing the, the thing, you know? I'm, I'm throwing out <laughs> advice after advice. This isn't a foodie podcast, you know? It's but, true. Yeah, but all right. Well, forget about what I don't know. Tell me what I should know about St. Louis cheese. So Provel is a cheese that is born and bred here in Missouri. <laughs> you already is, know more about cheese than Charlie did with that one, one sentence. It is one of the butteriest cheeses you could ever have one of the what cheeses it's the most buttery cheese the most buttery cheese Ooh. yeah when you get that on a st louis style pizza all that cracker crust and you go and take a bite in it it's like you're basically like have it like a pound of butter melted over already sticky and gooey cheese oh god that sounds delicious Wow. Uh huh. Now, and one thing here to say that's the most controversial thing to say here mm-hmm. is St. Louis has the best pizza in the entirety of the United States. Oh, okay. You cannot beat the cracker crust. <laughs> so you're talking about lavash or are you talking about pizza? No, pizza. You say it's the best pizza. But he said it's cracker crust. Yeah, it's a, th- it's a thin crust, like thin really crust. crackery crust. I know it. It sounds like lavash like to you me. Take a bite and it crunches. Yeah, take uh, a bite and bite and crunch. Okay, so you are. Get, I mean, do you understand how many haters we're gonna get on this exact interview well, when you're talking about? Yeah, hold on here. So I don't mind the haters. It's yeah. the truth. <laughs> so you're saying that St. Louis has the best pizza in the country? Yeah. Okay. You can't do the great deep dish. That's just too much bread. New York, it just it gets gooey in the center. Floppy. St. Louis has a perfect that. balance of crust, cheese, sauce rate ratio. And and you're saying Saint, now when I the first thing I think of when I think of St. Louis is not pizza. I'm gonna it's, be honest with you. It's it's the art. Toasted raviolis. It, oh yeah. You all know you got toasted raviolis. Uh, all you got, Charlie. This is a fun tip to if you're talking to anyone from St. Louis. Yeah. All you have to say, all you have to do is just know that they do toasted raviolis in St. Louis, and like people go bananas for that. Toasted raviolis. Okay. Oh yeah, it's ravioli breaded and deep fried. Breaded and deep fried. Now, where does the toasting come in? That's the. The, it's just what it's called. Just the deep it, it's deep It's one of those names. You, you think it's one thing, but it's actually another. Oh, wow. Okay. See, I love this. We learn something new every day. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, give me the exact, what's the number one, like, what is the, the best part of St. Louis pizza then? Is it the, is it the cracky crackle crust? I, I, I think it's all together. Like you got, that cracker crust, the perfect ratio of like sauce and cheese that just makes it like you're eating like just heaven. Now, well, what is <laughs> the classic? My biggest weakness is that I have no weaknesses. <laughs> That's basically what that answer was. I feel like all the Chicago deep dish pizza lovers are are just uh, not going to be happy with this situation because what you're talking about is the exact opposite of Chicago deep dish is just too much bread and sauce. Too much bread. It's, it's kind- just basically eating a pie and pizza, like a pizza and pie form. Yeah, it's like, a, it's, like it's a pizza pie. Yeah. 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 Well, I think that's what people like about it. It's kind of like a, a, a casserole. You know, hot dish, hot dish, casserole, whatever. Well, that's good. I like that. I think we get, we got a lot off of our chest in this uh, this situation. Here. I'm going to be honest. I don't think I've ever had St. Louis pizza, but now I got to try it and I got to see if all the buzz yeah, is Charlie, true. Here's another show. Bring Miles along. I will. We'll, we'll book a show in. Um, I'm not as groupy. We'll book okay? a show. Yes, he is. We'll book <laughs> a show in St. Louis. I'll bring Miles along. Just get them raviolis toasted and, and get us a, 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 a line on some good pizza. And we'll be down there and we'll all go up in the arch together. Okay. Go. I'm bringing a parachute. Emo's is the spot for pizza. What's that? Emo. I M O apostrophe S. Oh, Emos has the best pizza. Well, we'll go to Emos on our way to the arch, and then we'll eat the pizza on our way up through the arch. How does that sound? 
uh-huh and you'll be like mm, delicious mm-hmm. i bet i can see myself now taking that first bite oh, yeah. also, saying we that. also have provel bites which are deep fried little balls of provel cheese oh now that sounds really good doesn't it mm-hmm. it does yeah it I sounds mean, it sounds like a cheese curd it sounds eerily like a deep similar fried cheese curd to a cheese curd yeah i oh, wonder where you guys got that idea from huh <laughs> I don't know. We got a bunch of unhealthy food. We got a gooey butter cake. Butter cake? Gooey butter cake. Okay. You guys got a lot of butter stuff going on with cheese and cake. You make cheese. A whole stick of butter crust and a whole stick of butter in the filling. Oh, wow. Now I know why you guys are so hard on your plumbing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now you guys are doing a lot of stuff there's no plumber that could keep up with you guys with, with the amount of butter you guys are putting you in just stuff. have to put him on retainer and he's there every other week now i'm starting to wonder is st louis where you got where the butter boards were invented i don't know have you heard of that have you heard of the butter boards no miles have you heard of the butter boards no no it's this huge trend you guys have you guys heard of the butter boards none of you have heard of the butter boards i wish you would just get to what the butter boards are well i'm just amazed you haven't heard of the butter boards a butter board is where it's a board like a charcuterie board or charcuterie board however you say that and then you take a butter butter a stick of butter and you move it all around the board so it's just like this 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 pizza crust of butter but it's just butter and you put like uh toppings on it like garlic and uh paprika or something like that and then you just put chips in it or you take it's just a dip so you take a chip and you dip it in the butter and they've got like these high class butter boards now it's a it's the rage it's like a charcuterie board. yeah i could have said that all quicker and said it's a charcuterie board for butter but i didn't so what do you what do you think of that? Have you, none of you have seen those, huh? We got some unhealthy stuff. So, ooh, that sounds like a heart attack waiting to happen. Yeah, and that's coming from someone from St. Louis. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Well, thanks for calling in. This was a lot of fun, Ben. Informative. It was right. fun. It was all the above. We found out what's causing our plumbing to break, and we got a uh, and we got a. Uh, solution for how to fix the plumbing. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Keep us posted. We want pictures. Okay. All right. Well. All right. Yeah. Pictures. Yeah. No. I the pictures of of the the progress on the thing, not the reason that the toilet's yeah, always I was broken. Say, that's, you know. Just want to clear that up. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for calling in. This was great. Good All luck right. uh, convincing your dad's friends. Three to convince him to hire someone and uh good luck all right i'll need it i'll let you guys get back to your whole day of drinking all right well real good thank you so yeah charlie what a ride that was i know you know i just, i was just trying to peel the layers uh peel the I layers mean, it's just kind of funny because we just all have the same dad I know. I think. I it's, feel like. How do we all have the same dad? It, it was that generation, that generation of dads. They just kind of, and you know what? Honestly, we're probably going to grow up to turn the exact same way. We're going to keep yeah. the line going. Potentially. Yeah. Potentially. We'll I mean, see. I've been uh, fixing my carburetor now for at least a month and a half. So I kind of get it. Why don't you just hire someone? Ah, no, I can do it, dude. I just had to get a new diaphragm and a new, um, a new gasket. I, I ordered the wrong one is what happened. So you blew a gasket? Uh, yeah. Well, I didn't necessarily blow the gasket, but I think that's what happened. Oh. It's not firing the way it should. So, gotcha. Yeah. Um, you want to come over and you, hold my flashlight? You, so you've never had toasted ravioli? No, I haven't had toasted it's ravioli. It's pretty good. And you know what? I don't appreciate you getting on me about this whole cheese thing over and over and over again. I like cheese. Okay. Do I remember the name? You can't call yourself a cheese head if you don't know any cheeses outside of cheddar. I, I know cheddar, Colby, uh, you know, Swiss. Uh, Extra sharp cheddar. Yeah. Who gives a shit? You know, it all tastes wonderful. And that's all. And I just have a bad memory for food. Okay. Some people are foodies and other people just like eating food. All right. And I'm a guy who just likes eating food, you know? Sounds good. Yeah. Okay. Real good. Real good then. Should we do another call? Yep. Charlie, it's pretty cold out these days. It is nippy out there, Miles. And I tell you what, you got a vacation plan this winter? 
You know, I I don't know yet. I mean, I I should. I wish I did, but well, honestly, I don't know if I do. Yeah. Well, if you when you're making your plans, though, I'm just going to remind you to pl- make sure that you are planning around Tippy Cow in the sense you don't want to go down to the Florida Keys and get there and not have any tippy cow well miles uh do i have to check my bag with this in it i don't i don't know how that works how but do i fly with the tippy cow because mm-hmm. that's so you're just gonna have to drive to the florida keys i suppose you're yeah. right you know you we always make the sacrifices now can you drive to the florida keys i don't know how that works i don't know how it works either i've never been to the florida keys no. i don't know why i chose that as the place so i know nothing about it I don't know. I wonder if there's a key chain that can get you from Florida to the Keys. Yeah, probably. You know, um, the chain was that a where bridge. they get the keychain? That's why it's called a keychain. What's called a keychain? I just figured that out. Wait, what's called a keychain? A keychain. Is that why they named the keychain after the Florida Keys? I think it's a chicken or the egg situation. Ah, that's but, interesting. But regardless, I think what we can do is we can broomstack here at the club. With a little tippy cow and maybe discuss that and right. figure out, get to the bottom of it. It's you know? not a bad idea, you know, and no Googling allowed. Yes. When you're drinking tippy cow, you cannot bring out the Google. It it's takes... got to be a fair argument based off the knowledge you currently have. Yep. And if you don't have it, how much BS you have and how convinced you are of your own BS. Yeah. And I mean, tippy cow just helps, helps that along the way. It does. It's really conversation fluid. Yeah. And, uh, but Charlie, if you're not, if you can't fly with Tippy Cow, you just gotta go to the Wisconsin Dells for your vacation then this winter. They're, I'll be in the Dells for sure. They'll yeah. have they'll have Tippy Cow. Tippy Cow is made in Wisconsin. Yeah, from Wisconsin cows, so yep. it's fitting. Wisconsin cows, yeah, it's fantastic. And then there's nothing better. Now I'm getting all. Uh, I, I now uh, you want to go to the Dells. I just want to sit in uh, Noah's Ark Water Park right now and just sip on just some tip Tippy on Cow. Back. Yeah, Ooh. go down a big slide with some tippy cow. Try not to spill it in the drink. I think my dream would be to go down a slide that has tippy cow pushing me. Like that's the it's just lubrication a, a, of the slide. Wow, and th- th- that's heaven. That's what they call heaven, Miles. Right there. Yeah, yeah. So get some tippy cow. A little piece of heaven in your glass. Oh, Miles, you know what's coming up? Going to Fleet Farm. Yeah, Fleet Farm's coming up. How'd you know? Did you see that exit ahead of you? You know what I like about Fleet Farm is they got everything I need to do myself, a little ice fishing and whatnot. Yes, and I, uh, I'm about to fire up the old ice castle here soon and head out. Yeah, are you? Yeah. Real good. Except for Why? my problem right now is in the shed that we're storing it. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff in the way. Because, you oh, know, we yeah. put it in there last winter, and then we just kept putting shit in front of it. And yeah. then now I got to clear everything out of the way and then pull it out and the whole thing. But Becomes it's worth process. it. It's worth it, though. Yeah, it is, because you're going to get out there on that ice. And if you have anything that you need or that you broke from last year, you know where I think you got to go. Roll on up to Fleet Farm. Fleet Farm. We would love it. Yes, we do. And uh, they got everything you need. And also, you know, as the lakes start to unthaw, uh, and then you're going to have to, it's that time of year where you're going to have to get back into the old uh, uh, cat open water fishing. So they got yeah. that for you too, you know. They probably got some great sales. They always got great sales going. Check it out, your your local fleet farm. Well, and if you really want some good deals, you got to go to the Back 40. You been to the Back 40? Back 40. Yeah, that's what the sale section's called. Oh, my gosh. Well, yeah, I do have to do that. No matter how this podcast goes down, you want to go to Fleet Farm, check out the back 40, Charlie. That sounds awesome. Thanks, right. Miles. Can we get a toy from Toyland? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, real okay. fun. I want a Nerf gun. <laughs> I do, too. <laughs> That'd be fun. Fleet Farm. We love it. Hello. Who do we Hello. got on the line? Hey, this is uh, Roy from Spokane, Washington. Roy. Spokane. What's going on over there? Oh, not much. Just got done taking down the Christmas lights for the season, putting away oh. all the Christmas stuff. Oh, that's that's really quick of you, Miles. When is an appropriate time to take down the Christmas lights? Whenever you can get to it. Okay, fair enough. Or when all of the ice thaws on the roof, so you don't go sliding off. I honestly, yep, yep. I feel like you can just leave them up and not turn them on, and then they're already up for next year. That is true. That is <laughs> a good know? move. Yeah. 
That is a good strategy. I'll give you that one. Real I'm just not good. a big fan of them hanging down. Talk to me about what kind of lights you're putting up because I feel taken uh, down. Well, sorry that you put up that you just took down. I feel like the world is split into two people when it comes to Christmas lights. You have all right the really tight lights all the way around the house. Everything is just looks pristine. All the lights are facing up. All the bulbs are not burnt out. There's not a single burnt out one. And they're usually the white lights. Then the other one, they're kind of haphazardly thrown up there. And they're usually a bunch of <laughs> colored lights. Which category do you fall into? All right. So I might be a half and half for you. So I do the classic colored lights. But all perfectly done. Straight up on the clip. Okay. Right on the roof I, th line. I think you're a rare breed then. I know you don't see the colored lights not haphazardly thrown up there very often anymore. I know, and it drives me crazy. I can't stand the haphazardly guys, you know. It's like why even do it? <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> you're forced to by somebody. If, if you're not gonna do it right, why do it at all? Because someone know? asked you to do it and you didn't want to do it. That's why. Well, listen, what yeah. we kind of jumped off the uh, we kind of latched onto your Christmas lights thing pretty hard there. Well, I'm, so. kinda, I'm hold on. I'm still kidding. He seems like he's he, you seem like a guy who takes that shit pretty seriously. You have any like uh, lawn stuff you blow up and have all winter long? Like talk to me about the rest <laughs> of your decorations. Yeah, well, I, I have scaled back a little bit this year because the snow came way too soon. Yeah. So uh, normally I have uh, a star I put up, and then uh, we wrap our flagpole with lights, and oh. it looks like a big candy cane. But I didn't do that this year. <laughs> but this year I did buy my first Christmas inflatable, and it was Santa's waist up. It looks like he fell off your roof into a snow pile. Oh, that's ah. fun. That's unless you don't have snow, yeah. then uh, then that just looks like oh, yeah. a decapitated Santa. Cut off at the legs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it was pretty good. So in your mind, what makes a good Christmas setup? Uh, preferably some sort of theme or at least uh, matching lights, right? I've seen the people, they put like, you know, like the newer lights, they got the purple in there yep. instead of the blue. Yep. So they do that plus the old ones with like the classic orange, white, red, blue. And so, I mean, that kind of... Throws it off. Just stick to one light is what uh, you're saying. Commit to a yeah. style. One style light. Yeah. Don't go crazy and try to do it all. What else? It just looks messy. Uh, I mean, just because I do it, I like it to be a nice, clean line, you know? I like them all facing the same direction. Uh, I'm okay with the staples. If you don't want to do the clips, I've done the staples for a long time. But uh, you got to watch the wire with the staple gun because I've uh, shorted out a couple lines doing that. Oh, yeah. I believe that. Yeah. Clark Griswold is what we'll call you. Yeah, I'll take it. Got the compliment. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> what else you got on your mind? Why don't you belly up to the bar and, and see if we can help you out today? All right. So I just uh, some podcast specific questions. Okay. Uh, me and my buddy, we have a podcast we're getting going. And it's called uh, Supper Club Social. And we got the name from Charlie from talking about Supper Club Social or Supper Clubs. Oh, yeah. Sketches. Yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, I don't know, we pretty much just talk about our daily lives and then we make a cocktail and uh, we give our review on it. And I was wondering, uh, how do you guys... Like, do you guys have people edit it for you, or are you guys editing it yourself? Yeah, I mean, I think at this point, you know, you're early on in doing it, and until you kind of take off and, and get to that next thing, you kind of edit it yourself, and that way, you know, when you hire somebody, you'll know uh, exactly the process of what they're doing, so uh, it's just easier for you to manage if you know, like, every part of that, but definitely when you're starting small, you kind of do all of it, you do all your social media, everything. And you just kind of slowly build it over time. Eventually, you know, when you get a sponsor or maybe something like that, and then you can uh, hire somebody um, to, to do that for you. But, yeah, it's just slow and go, man. But super awesome. You're doing that. Love that concept. And, um, yeah, send us over one of the episodes. We'd love to take a listen. 
Oh, awesome. Yeah, I'll do that. Cool, man. What Congrats. Other, yeah, what other questions do you have about it? Uh, I mean, that's pretty much it. I mean, we're like you said, we're just getting going. Our biggest video has like 150 views. That's it. But uh, well, you get there. It's been a fun, a uh, little hobby to do. Yeah, keep doing it, well, man. We want to remind you that at one point we had 150 views as well. 100, percent we did. So we all yeah. started from zero. So you're just in the different time oh, period yeah. of it. We got know? a couple of those on there too. Yeah. While well, we got yeah. you on the horn, is there anything you want to buy, sell, or trade? <laughs> Uh, no, not currently. No. I, got a, <laughs> I have a really tiny artificial tree. If anybody wants it for free, I'd give it away. Oh, so he's got a free, are you putting it by the curb? Is this a curb alert? Oh uh, yeah, it can be. I'll put it out there. It's just down in the basement right now. Yeah. Put it out there. I mean, now is the time of the year. Someone's going to really want, no, seriously, you know, you get the right thinking person's going to go scoop up that. Tr- now, what kind of tree are we talking Oh, well, our tree went out last Christmas, so we had to buy a quick replacement. So we just bought like a cheap little thin Walmart pre lit one. But uh, you got to sell it better. Maybe, you got to sell it better. You got to say this is a like pre. Six feet tall. Yeah, it's free. It's been used one season uh, on the thin side. So that's why we didn't use it again this year. We just got a new one. But uh, if you like, if you don't got a big space, it's perfect for a small space, like maybe an apartment or. Like if you just rent in a room, you can fit it in your room, no problem. And it don't need any water, and it's pre lit. Nope, there you no go. Water. But the nope. thing, yep, you know, pre-lit. all those stats are fine. But let's sell them on what it makes them feel when they see it. This tree, yes, it's sitting in the corner, but it fills <laughs> the whole room. You walk into that room, you and go. suddenly you are filled with holiday spirit, because that's what kind of tree it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you yeah, I like that. That's don't, good. yeah, I love that, Miles. Don't say it's a, a cheap Walmart tree. Say it's giving off Charlie Brown Christmas vibes. You know, yeah, <laughs> that's nostalgia. Yeah, yeah we're, we're it's not you build old. This up. It's nostalgic. You gotta you be a you know marketing side of it. Change up the words. Yeah, I like it. Awesome. I'll give it a shot when I put it on there when I'm done with you guys. Heck yeah. Well, thank you so much for calling in. We appreciate the heck out of you. Yeah, thank you. I think you, hope you guys had a good holidays. Thank you. You as well. Take care now. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah. This guy loves Christmas. Fellow does love Christmas. I mean, he's, you know, he's t- now. When Obviously, is- this is not coming out around Christmas at I know. all. I know. So, well, let's give the let's give the audience a little bit of back story on this because we're shooting this on the 2nd of January. Okay. So he's already taking his Christmas lights down. I mean, this guy means business. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, like we didn't even put up a tree this year. Yeah, I didn't either. And when I, I asked Ann why we didn't put up a tree, she's just like, she was like, I don't know. I don't really like the way that we had it last year, so I'm not going to do it this year. <laughs> That's like, it. <laughs> she, she's like, hey, well, you could change something up this year. It's not like you have to do it exactly the way you did last year. Did but. you say that to her? Yeah. Did like, she say, Miles, why don't you do the tree? I mean, I wasn't complaining about not having to set up the tree with her. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, that's so, good. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, you know, maybe this guy will have some. Maybe you should connect him with Ann. Yeah. I mean, this guy, he should just start. He should start his own, like, Christmas lights business the way that he sounds like he's operating. It's, I mean, he runs a tight ship. Runs a tight ship on the Christmas lights. And, you know, that says a lot about. A, a fella it does if they, if they you know they get their christmas up this christmas lights up tight and bright well geez you know they don't mess around in other areas of their I, life i look too. at a guy like that and go he was raised right he's raised right he's an honest fella all right well charlie i think that's another episode in the books what do you think i think so thank you all for listening to another episode of the bellied up and uh you guys just enjoy the heck out of yourselves okay? and don't forget to tip your bartender do not forget okay Cheers. Love you guys. See you guys.